lobby. Bring the face around, left. <laughs> hold it there, hold it there. Yeah. That looks so good. Very much born into a basketball environment. When I was born, my dad was the general manager of the Victorian Amateur Basketball Association. And we lived in Albert Park in, in Melbourne. And what they did is back in the late 50s, there was these old army warehouse storage facilities that were no longer required. And the Commonwealth gave it to sport. And one of them was converted to basketball, one was to badminton, one was to table tennis. And in their wisdom, when they were doing this conversion, basketball built a manager's residence that was attached to the basketball stadium. And with my dad's job, primarily was running that facility and trying to grow the game. So from the time I was born until I was about 13 or 14, I lived in that facility. So I had a very unique uh, upbringing and uh, combined with that environment was the fact that my dad was uh, an elite player and an elite coach. So the combination of a incredible environment with a nine court basketball stadium really is my backyard and a dad that clearly had the wisdom to coach and teach, gave me a, a bit of an advantage over my peers. Although I was born into a basketball environment, uh, I never really had basketball athleticism. I had good size. I was always a little bit taller and I grew to be 201, which I think is about six foot seven. So I had a, an advantage with my size, but I was never blessed with great quickness or athleticism. Because I, I, I live with that nine courts in my backyard, the amount of hours that I spent just shooting the ball. And a lot of times it never really felt like official practice. You're just there, you've got nothing to do, and out in the back your mates would come around, you want to shoot some hoops, and although it wasn't official practice, or I didn't feel like practice, it, it absolutely was practice. And, and because of that, I was able to develop uh, a, a reasonable perimeter game. For me, I think that the biggest advantage was, because I played so much, throughout those formative years was just an understanding of the game. And I was able to use that knowledge to compensate for some of my athletic deficiencies. So it was um, all the stars aligned for me and uh, I was fortunate to be in the right place at the right time, in the right environment with the right parents. And uh, all those factors uh, came along nicely for me and, and enabled me to have a, a respectable career playing the game. The career highlight for me, it's hard to answer because I've been blessed with so many unbelievable opportunities and it's kind of like asking me, well, which one of your kids do you love the most? Because they all mean so much. But I guess if you, you twisted my arm and you said, well, you had to pick one, it would be uh, representing Australia and playing at the Olympic Games. Because of my dad's involvement in the sport, I was motivated and inspired as a youngster to, to want to replicate that and I learnt not just about the basketball, I learned about the spirit of the competition and all the other values associated with it were, were instilled in me at a very young age. For me as a youngster, uh, putting my head on the pillow and thinking of the most heroic thing I could ever do, and that was to, to hit the winning basket for Australia to win the gold medal in the Olympic Games. That was my, my boyhood dream. And I suppose because of that, those opportunities to play for Australia and, and experience the Olympics and all the things that go along with it are the things that I uh, admire the most and, and respect the most and feel the most grateful for. You've got to turn whatever the challenge is. Sometimes it can be arduous where you're out on the floor and you're spending a lot of hours, the coach is barking at you and there can be circumstances that can really take you out of your comfort zone. But in your own head and your own imagination, you've always got to uh, keep it in perspective and understand you've got, it's got to become fun and you've got to sometimes make it fun. And if you can do that and you have a love and a passion for the sport, you give yourself your ch a chance. So have fun, enjoy the game, um, put the time in, but keep it in perspective and make sure that you, you don't compromise other areas of your life uh, in that pursuit. I'm a bit seat of the pants. I know what I want, and uh, sometimes there's a bit of serendipity. You've got to be a little bit lucky as a photographer. Sometimes, you know, the planets align and it all comes together. And you know, you might you might take 30 pictures and there's just one. That's all you need. And the face is an amazing thing. You know, you can shoot a face, 
Um, and the slightest nuance, 29 don't work, and there's one shot, and you go, why does that work? Who knows? That's just, that's the luck involved. I like putting up in people that uh, mean something to me, or for whatever reason, they, they, it resonates. You know, you can go up with preconceived ideas, and everybody does, and then all of a sudden out of left field something happens, or someone does something. I'm an old press hack in another life, and I work, I work pretty fast, but I know when I've got it, pretty much. I know when I've got what I want. So, and sometimes there's luck involved, that's just the way it goes. You know, that's half the fun, really. Get back and you look at your eggs, or your, your eggs. <laughs> you get on, the, on your screen and you go through and you go, yes, I got it, you know. See the different vibe there? Albert Watson is one of my heroes and English photographers. He always said that 80% of a photograph was actually talking to your subject. And I concur completely, because if you can make someone relax, do a bit of research, drop a bad one line, I don't know, just, just let them drop their guard because I want to get behind that, I want to get them off guard. And that's the shot you want, you don't want that standard sort of stock headshot, you want to get something behind that and that's what I'm okay at. So, you know, you don't always get it but that's what I, I enjoy getting that, going yes, gotcha. <laughs>